Phil Jones carries an MBE for his services to business. And under his leadership, Brother UK have been named a Times Top 100 Place to Work, an Investors in People Gold Workplace, and CIO Technology Business of the Year, to name but a few. He is one of the emerging thought leaders on organisational design and leadership. He's here tonight to share with us his formula for success. Ladies and gentlemen, what a treat. It's Phil Jones, MBE. Thank you very much indeed. And can I thoroughly recommend that book, The Chimp Paradox? It's absolutely brilliant uh, to read. Can I recommend two other books while I'm here quickly that you should uh, also read alongside that book? The first one is Detox Your Ego by Stephen Sylvester. Fantastic. The one after that one will be Achieve the Impossible by Professor Greg White. If you read those books, to be honest with you, you're on the pathway to success. I've been Phil Jones. Good night. <laughs> More? More. All right. Can I firstly get the elephant in the room totally out the way? Yes, Bradley Wiggins did model his 2012 haircut on mine. <laughs> okay, I could see how you're looking at me. I know it. So let's get it out of the way. So ladies and gentlemen, um, in the day job, of course, I run this company called Brother, and you're probably all thinking, Brother, Brother. I know it's familiar, isn't it? You just can't think, what? Computer printers. And then everyone goes, oh, that Brother? That brother, yes, so I run that business day to day and of course we're a global multinational and we do lots of you know, really good things, but a couple of years ago I had some strategy consultants come to see me from McKinsey, of course big global grown up corporates, we have management consultants come when we have problems, right? And anyway, we, we were trying to figure out a... Um, a kind of a, a strategy for our business globally uh, to, to have a certain approach to a certain sector of a certain marketplace. And of course, what do the management consultants need to do? They need to travel to all of our hundred offices all over the world. Why wouldn't you? What a jolly, right? They go all over the world, they ask us all questions, and they, they bought back and they started to introduce this idea of something they call the winning pattern. And that really, really got my interest. The winning pattern, what does that mean? Well, what they're actually talking about was this idea really of looking across these 100 different organisations we've got in our company and saying, what are the common attributes that we're seeing about the approach to that segment of the marketplace, which we can codify and put together and then actually make a winning pattern that anybody could implement to actually uh, drive an approach? And I thought that was a really, really good idea. So good that I thought, how could I use that idea, that idea of the winning pattern in other areas of the things that I do? And I'd been starting to get quite curious about success particularly. Uh, I'd been reading Ultimate Power by Tony Robbins at the time. Anyone read Tony Robbins? Yeah, yeah, good few people in the room. He talks about something he calls the syntax of success. And what that means is you go away and if you want to be more successful, you study people that are successful and they go, how do they do it? What's the sequence that they use? And you basically take that and you copy it. You do it yourself. Don't try innovating, just do what they do. And I think that has really got a lot of merit. I really, really do. I mean, he's worth multi-millions and talks all over the world. Brilliant. But I think the winning pattern is more appealing to me because it's not about specific syntaxes. It's really about more a wave of different approaches that you might be able to take. So in my life, I am incredibly lucky. Um, I'm an incredibly lucky guy because I get to meet lots of successful people actually in my life. Um, I've met everybody from oh, successful entrepreneurs. I mean, goodness me, I was with a fellow the other week. Get this, him and his brother started life out with one news agent. They sold the one news agent, bought a petrol station. That's now 800 petrol stations. And he just, when I was there on the day, received a check for a part of the business that he'd taken as equity. The cheque was for 135 million. It was one for him and one for his brother for the same amount. Just arrived that day. So I've met people like him. I've met Kenya King, the founder of the Mobos. I've met people out of the forces. Um, only last week I met the um, director of plans from Helmand province. I've met gold medalists. 
I've met people from all walks of life who have found success. And I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking success is all about the money, right? It's all about the dollar, baby. But it's not. It's not about that. Because I saw a lovely quote earlier on Twitter, and it said, it was from uh, Dale Carnegie, actually. And what it said was, um, success is getting what you want. There it is. Success is getting what you want, whatever you define that success might be. He also said, happiness is wanting what you get, which I thought was quite funny. So, off I go. And then I start to look at these people, and I start to think about what it is and how they do it. And of course, it wouldn't be complete unless I got sat next to Steve Interesting Davis over dinner last week. Yeah, I got sat next to Steve Interesting Davis. And I now can categorically tell you, Steve Interesting Davis isn't that interesting. <laughs> he is actually. What he said to me, which I thought was quite funny, because I, I try and pressure test this stuff, you know? You come up with this idea, you meet successful people, and what you want to do is pressure test it. I'm thinking of this like formula for success. What do you think? And so I started working on Steve Davis. And he went, oh yeah, it's all very well, it's all very well, but you're missing one major thing. And I went, well, of course, you know, I'm, I'm sat ready for it, aren't I? Tell me, Steve, what am I missing? He says, you're missing the knack. The bloody knack? What do you mean? And he said, well, you know, some people just have a knack for something. And I said, well, the thing is, Steve, it's not really part of the winning formula. Because if you've been born with a knack for something, I can't really sort of recode you from birth. Do you know what I mean? So I, I can't put the knack in. You're like, all right, all right, all right, I get you. He's a successful house DJ now. Do you know that? Like really like banging techno house. Steve Davis. Incredible. So here am I. I'm in, I'm in amongst all these people and I'm beginning to code these things. And all I've done now is I've put this into a formula and I'm only showing you a shortened version of this today. I'm working with a mathematician, yeah, a mathematician, into this really magic formula. It's like about this long already, uh, with all these syntaxes and codes and all that stuff and it. it's great, um, really lighting me up. But we're gonna share a little bit of it today, what I've found from those people that I've met. Because I'm here for you tonight. Yes, every single one of you. I'm here because I want you to walk away more successful than when you arrived tonight. So listen up and hopefully we'll give you one thing at least that you could go away and implement as a winning pattern. But first things first, here's the first big insight. And yes, it's a TLA, a three letter acronym. These people that I've met have learned to turn on their tap. Their opportunity flows because they are very focused on their time, what they give attention to, and the priority of the things that turn up in their lives. This is a very key insight that I want to give you. Because I'm sure you know, as I do, because I've been one. You know plenty of people that are rocking chairs. The people that have a lot of motion but go nowhere. Know what I mean? Rocking chairs. When you meet them, they go, you go, how are you? They go, I'm so busy. I go, brilliant, right, okay. So busy's great, is it? What if you're a busy fool? Is that great? Because one thing I will tell you, is that your diary is your statement of intent against your goals, your ambitions, your purpose, or what you want to achieve. Your diary is your statement of intent. What does your diary say about you? If you were to look at it tomorrow morning, how does it say, yeah, I am planning my time, my resources, and my attention to achieve the things that are really important to me? That might be an uncomfortable question. Because lots of people talk about things like work-life balance, don't they? You know, it's not a balance anymore, though, is it? It's a blend now in our days, isn't it, folks? We blend our work and life. Um, but actually, I want to give you another balance that I want you to spend your time and attention on. Because these successful people that I've seen, this is another common attribute. It's their create-react balance. 
They spend more of their time creating their outcomes than they do reacting to the things that turn up. Because lots of busy fools, lots of rocking chairs, actually get loads of stuff in and spend their days reacting to life, like a fax machine sitting to arrive and just print out messages. They email monitor, they're sat at their screen. They're the people that when you send them an email, reply like seven seconds later. Yeah, the busy people. So, I want you to really have a think about the fact that you, how much of your time is creating your future and how much of your time are you reacting to your future. And I have a little formula that I use in my own life. I simply call it out on in. I spend a third of my time out the business, a third of my time on the business, and a third of my time in the business. That's it. And when I'm out, I'm creating. I'm doing stuff. I'm learning. I'm inhaling the world. I'm meeting people. I am creating the future for our company and for myself against our goals and our purpose. So, the other thing is, is these people have really learned to say no. Any serial pleasers in the house? Where are you? Oh, one. One or two. I bet there's more of you. Just afraid to put your hand up. I was a former serial pleaser, all right? I was a former serial pleaser. You know what? You ask me something, I just say yes. You know, I just want to be, keep people happy. I want people to like me. You know, you, you, yeah, can you do that? Yeah, I can help with that. I can help with that. What happens? You just end up loading yourself up, stressing yourself out and having no time for the things that matter to you. So learning to say no is a very key attribute of successful people. And it hurts a bit at first because you think, what are people going to think? But you've got to become very protective about your time. Because if there's one thing that I do know is time is the one thing where you set your exchange rate. It's your currency. You set the exchange rate. If you allow people to absorb your time and you don't have any exchange rate, or indeed what you're looking for really is an amplification of your investment. You want more for your buck. You certainly don't want less. If you allow that to happen, you will simply dilute your ability to achieve the things that you want to achieve. So I've been getting, beginning to gather all this information now, and I've got my super mathematical formula. But I want to share just three components of that formula with you. Um, just three things that I think stand out in a shortened pattern of success that you might want to think about. So the first one relates to what I call your dot on the horizon. And if, if just thinking back to what Glenn said a moment ago about you know, when your chimp leaps out, if you have longer orientated goals in my view, which are well pressure tested, it, your chimp jumps out far less because actually you're working to a longer term orientation. And actually, things about orientation are things like your motivation for doing something. So if you've got a goal that you want to achieve, if a successful person has a goal that they want to achieve, they understand that they need a motivation behind it. So chatting to somebody in my car park at Brother this morning, he was complaining about their weight. I said to them, you know, well, why do you want to lose weight? They just said, well, I don't really. I'm overweight. They go, well, don't complain about it unless you've got a motivation to try and lose your weight because the motivation becomes the reason to give you the discipline to do the things you've got to do. Now, I practiced this myself. A year ago, uh, I needed to lose 10 kilograms of weight in 10 weeks. I wanted a big, dirty goal, a big cycling challenge. So I just set myself the goal, 10 kilograms, 10 weeks. Pretty simple. I did it because I just found somebody, I set the goal, I set the target, and I found somebody that gave me the syntax of success to get that done. And I followed it religiously. And I said no to stuff. And I planned in all the training time that I needed and the eating that I needed and the changes that I needed to get to my goal. I had orientation and discipline in my pathway. So I think that before you um, think about success, You've got to think about what it is you want. Where is that dot? Are you trying to go over there or are you trying to go over there? Until you figure that out, it's really hard to orientate yourself. So, have you ever heard this idea of, you know, when a plane goes one degree off? You ever heard that idea? Right, you know, if a plane takes off and one goes this way and they go one degree out, they take off, then where does that plane end up? 
Well, I can tell you, because I did the mathematics on it, um, I was doing it when I was doing my staff kickoff meeting the other week, and I was trying to understand that if our plans went one degree off, how far away would we be from our goal? We had a three-year goal, and let me tell you that if a plane takes off and goes one degree off course, it goes off 60 miles, effectively, roughly every minute that it travels. So when I looked at my own plans at Brother, and I said, look, in our three-year plan, we want to be over there somewhere. But if every single person, with every single minute of their time, went one degree off my plan, over the three-year plan that we've generated, we'd be eight million miles away from our goal. Now, you can see suddenly the importance of orientation and actually staying really, really close to what you want. So the key for us is, is actually making sure that what our plan and our true reality, i.e., we're planning to go over there, but if you really took a hygiene check and said, how am I spending my time, how am I investing my resources, and who am I spending my time with, your reality might be very, very different. So actually, what you might be having is fairly hollow words relevant to your plan, because successful people don't do that. They make sure that their, their tasks, their time, their resources are orientated towards the success that they're trying to create. And they do this, that from what I've seen, through, number one, having very, very good decision-making. So, as Glenn might say, you know, not making uh, decisions through the limbic brain, but really making more logical, well-reasoned, rational, long-term decisions based, you know, not in the moment when you're under pressure, but when you can make good decisions. They are highly disciplined. They really are disciplined. You know, if, if, it, if it's this or that, they will say this or that. They won't try and do both. And generally, if, if that is not against their plan, they do this. Ever so simple. And in the decisions that they make, what they do do is they just make decisions. Because a lot of people that I have met that are trying to be successful aren't making the right decisions. They're, they're thinking about decisions, but they're not making decisions. And really successful entrepreneurs are the people that made decisions to do things. They saw a gap in the market and they acted. Are you one of those people that had this really good idea and when somebody else does it and makes like 25 billion pounds, you go, I thought of that idea. Yeah, of course you did. Well, why didn't you do something about it? The difference is they did, right? That's just called action. Secondly, how they execute against those things. So if you really look at success, um, you know, execution, how you get things done is vitally important. You know, how you make efficient use of everything that you've got in terms of your time to deliver these goals. Because, you know, efficiency, efficiency for me is where you apply constancy times methodology. So you've got to find the right methodology from the right person to achieve the goal, and you've got to be consistent in the way that you apply it. So think back to that weight loss goal that I had. I had a goal, I had somebody teach me exactly what I needed to do, and I applied that with absolute discipline and constancy every single day of my life to achieve that goal. That's what that fundamentally means. So these individuals are already looking for the syntax of success of, success of other people. They, they don't need to recreate the wheel. They already know what the wheel looks like. And they just crack on because they don't need to do anything new. They already can take that bit of code, that bit of code, that bit of code, whack it together into a plan and crack on with that plan. They're very, very clever. They're very efficient with the way that they use their time. And the third thing is, is the way they organize themselves. You know, really, really organized. Um, I, I haven't met many really disorganized, successful people. They tend to be really quite organized. And what they do is they're very disciplined, they've got great time management, they really prioritize things. Don't you ever seen a priority matrix? Really fantastic tool, ever so simple. Draw yourself a box on a piece of A4 paper and just go, right, how hard is this thing to do? Easy, medium, difficult. How big of an impact will it have on my life if I do it? Low, medium, big. And you start, when you've got something you think you want to do, you put it into the relevant box. Just ladies and gentlemen, do the things that have got high impact and they're easy to do first. You will get immediate traction on success. Okay? The people that are less successful are spending all their time working on things that they like, but they might be really difficult to do with low impact, but they think they're interesting. Yep. 
they just simply get outpaced by the people that actually have more ambition, more desire, more execution to achieve the things they want to achieve. But the one thing I really saw, this was very, very interesting to me, is they had figured out who their fan base are. And this is another TLA everybody, yeah, I'm bringing them home tonight. Successful people really, really think about the people that, who are influencing them. And here's my question to you. Who's influencing you? Who is controlling and conditioning the way that you think? Who are the five people you spend most of your time around? Who actually is influencing your outcomes? Because, uh, as Glenn might tell you, a lot of your thinking is preconditioned from your experiences, from your parents, from your upbringing, all, you know, environment, whatever that might be. You've got a lot of preconditioned thinking. And what you've got to do is get rid of that preconditioned thinking, actually, and find new thinking that serves you. But if you've got people around you that support your existing conditioned thinking, then you're in trouble. Because effectively, you just get this constant validation cycle of you know, old thinking with people validating old thinking, and you don't get much new thinking. So I want to give you this acronym in order that you can start to sift through people in your network. And the acronym goes a bit something like this. The F bit is your friends and family. Okay, these are the people in your tightest possible cocoon, the people closest to you. And, you know, friends are, you know, true friends, all right, not Facebook connections, okay, not a thousand LinkedIn contacts, they're not your friends. Friends are normally less than that. Yeah, these are your real inside, your inner crypt of people who you would who'd take a bullet for you. They're your friends and family. So really, they're quite important. They're, your, they're those people in that bubble. The next part of this is the acquaintances that you know, all right? And we have lots of acquaintances in our life, right? And an acquaintance to me is somebody that's sort of in that middle ground between being in your network and a friend. You know each other, you see each other, you know, hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right, how are you? How's the children? Yeah, everything's fine. How's your children? Everything's fine. Have a nice night, chink. Okay, they're probably network. Acquaintance is kind of that extra bit of, you know, oh, great, you know, should we have dinner again in a couple of months? Nice to see you, that kind of, they're acquaintances. So network is just sort of your wider community of people that you know. It could be your Twitter following. It could be your contacts on LinkedIn. It, it's not the people on, on WhatsApp. You know, WhatsApp is probably acquaintance if you use WhatsApp. You know, we use sort of different hierarchy of social media systems to know. You know I, do, I certainly do. If you text, if you've got my mobile phone number, you're normally an acquaintance. You know, you, you, you're, you're probably sending me texts or WhatsApps. WhatsApp. If you're in my network, then it's via LinkedIn or probably via Twitter. So kind of there's a hierarchy of communication these people use. But the worst bunch of people around you, ladies and gentlemen, and these peace successful people don't stand for them, is the suckers. You all know who they are, don't you? Those people you spend time with that seem to suck the life out of you. The time, the energy, they take up more than they give. They take all the time. They're negative. They just withdraw. Everything that you've got that you're trying to spend time doing ends up distracted on them. And successful people that I've met have quite literally got this big swinging hatchet that eliminates those people from their life. They don't stand for them. So my, my, my advice to you is, is don't stand for them either. And it's a pretty big and a nasty cull when you do it but you will feel released and energised when you do. So sort of pulling this all together, um, there is one other thing, because of course these are all sort of, you know, you do this, you do this, you do this, but then life gets in the way, doesn't it? Because life starts, you start people pleasing, family stuff gets in the way, you know, little Johnny's grazed his knee and needs his mum and, you know, or, Johnny's got to go to the football Saturday, but I was doing the right this presentation. You know, no, it's got to get done, right. Um, and then lots of unrelated things occur. And these are just things that we call distractions. And you can't eliminate all distractions out of your life, ladies and gentlemen. You simply can't. You've got to manage those things as and when they turn up. But what you must do is you must filter those things. All right, figure out what matters and what doesn't matter. 
Because if an unrelated thing turns up from a sucker, then you don't do it. If an unrelated thing turns up from a friend or family, then you do it, right? So it's about the filter that you apply to those things. So my little winning pattern that I wanted to share with you tonight is I believe success and successful people that I've met thus far are really simply have got their end state orientated. They know where they're going. They fanatically execute against that end state and they're incredibly well organised in the resources that they use to execute against the end state that they want. They really want it. They've got all the goals, the motivation, all that stuff sorted out and they just basically get on with it. And all of that, because this is a bit of a formula, is divided by the amount of distraction that they allow in their life. If you're an individual that just gets distracted by shiny new projects, then very simply, they would withdraw your ability to achieve your success. So it's about ensuring that the things that you're saying yes to are complying with what you want. And finally, um, the really big one, is I believe that if, if you're old enough, um, and obviously only being 32 as I put my hand up earlier, um, that if you remember this airline, TWA, um, I'll, I've got to finish on another big acronym, Martin, if that's all right. I'm going to make it a big one. Um, have a think about this. Just fly TWA, because this is what these people do. When they have a thought or they're speaking about a new idea, they action it. Thoughts and words into action is the ultimate piece of creativity that you can do. Because if, if you just think about things, if you just talk about things, but you never really crack on with it, then you will simply be one of those people that just is always trying and in the struggle, what I call um, being in the grind. And the people that have made it to the grand, grind to grand, have simply got this letter difference. There's only one letter difference, it's A, and it's the attitude and it's the action that they take to be successful. So, so there it is. Just go away and do that tomorrow. You're gonna to all be multi-millionaires, like, and I'm gonna come back next year, and we're just gonna have this massive party, aren't we? We'll have champagne on every table, Martin, right? And everyone's gonna go, yes, I did this, and I am more successful. But remember, it's not about the money. It's about whatever it is that fundamentally you define success as. And successful people's successful KPI is just simply how well they orientate towards the thing that they want. They're not looking at other people, they're looking at themselves and deciding those things against what's important to them, which I recommend to you. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. <laughs>